Three, no, three, two, one. <laughs> hey, internet friend, this is Magic <laughs> Red on the Magic Red Show. And I've got a special guest that's a northerner. And because um, I'm from Minnesota and she's up in Canada. I'm trying to get the detail on you, but I can't find it. I had it in here. Because you're a, you're, Susan, you're a, um, a book expert, right? You know about books. I love books, Brad. It's Crossman. Sue, Crossman, the, yes. That's the last name, Crossman, like this, Crossman. And um, it was interesting because like I asked how we got connected and it's bizarre how this internet stuff all connects people. And the reason I bring that up is because sometimes people just go on the internet and look for things and you don't know who you're really connecting with. That's why I like to do these videos. We get to see you and look at your face and know that you're, you're not some crazy person over in some <laughs> weird country doing funny stuff. You're really you. I really am me. How long have today, you lived there? Today. In, um, I'm just outside of Toronto and I've been here about 12 years. I okay. spent another 10 years in Montreal, Quebec, which is still part of Canada. And uh, yeah, that's, you know, that takes care of a couple of decades anyway. Deep roots, but you don't have any weird accent or anything. Thank you. I, I do say A. Well, of course. That's a part of our vocabulary here. And well, about, was, everybody, uh, all, all about, Americans want to hear about. <laughs> about and process yeah. instead of process. Oh yeah, that's another one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to party with the Canadians when I was back doing martial arts up in Duluth, which is by Lake Superior. So we're boarded there and the Canadians mm. come down to compete and boy, do they know how to party. Yes, yes. <laughs> Anyways, let's get uh, back to you got married and got kids and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I've been married, divorced, remarried, widowed, and now I've got a wonderful sweetheart uh, that uh, keeps me company and makes me smile. So I've got three <laughs> kids. I have my oldest daughter lives in London, England now, and she's oh, pregnant cool. with my first grandchild is coming. So that's very exciting. So you're going to be a grandma. Um, I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to be a glamma. Is that how they say it up there? No, I've decided I don't, I don't like the grandma idea, but I like the glamour oh, I get idea. it. The glamorous, <laughs> kind of like glamping. Instead of yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of okay. thing. Yeah. I get that. Glamour. I'm a glamour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I have a 22-year-old son and a 20-year-old daughter. So very close to empty nesting. How long have you been in business? Since 1994, I would say, off and on. I took some years out for motherhood in there, but mm -hmm. I'm a, I've been a writer forever and uh, really uh, started freelancing in 1994. The business has changed quite a bit. It's now actually a business. For a long time, it was just freelance writing, but now right. we have an employee and everything. So I'll bet the world has changed extremely with uh, with the internet because the internet's kind of opened everything for everybody. So you can do your, you you can publish your own book and all that kind of stuff. And I, I'm a advocate of working with an expert that's kind of pioneered and been there, done that kind of thing. So you work with someone like you that kind of says, "Oh, you don't have to do that." By the way, you can quantum leap over the top of that step. Oh. And they just tell you that you got to have that. And did you get, is it an ISBN number and stuff that you got? ISBN, to yeah. All that stuff. If you forget to put that on your cover, you think, oh my God, I got all these books printed, but oops. <laughs> oh my gosh. I tell you, so I've written five books and I can remember back. So as a writer, as you can imagine, my biggest dream had been to write a book someday. And it took me years and years and years to get up the courage to start. And then I got pregnant with my second child, who's my 22 year old son. And thought, okay, well, I'm a writer. I, what better time to start writing a book than when I'm pregnant? I figured, you know, there's kind of a, a deadline here, you know, get the book done in nine months, baby will be born, book will be done, off we go. And of sure. course, the, the baby came out after nine months, but the book did not. <laughs> you didn't birth the book. <laughs> not then. And it took me another 10 years, 11 years to really finish that book. So to your point of having someone help you, I, I really had a lot of mindset issues around it. Who am I to write a book? Who's going to read my book? Wow. I don't know how to get a book published. And then, of course, life was busy, as it is for most people. And really, it took the death of my husband to uh, help me realize, you know, there, there is actually a deadline 
so to speak. Yeah. And what if I don't finish that book? What yeah, if I die a, before it's a, done? Like I better get out, get on it. There's information that's inside you that you're not. Someone said said something like about the the, the music inside you to hmm. let it out and stuff. Because if you don't, you're kind of doing a disservice to humanity. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's how I see it now. I didn't see it at, that way at right. the time. This is some years ago now. What but... do you think it is that prevents people from actually taking action and getting it done? Is it the fear of doing it wrong or is it because they've got information that they don't, they don't feel worthy? That's, I think that's a big part of it. I think learning how to start writing a book is a big issue, like just knowing how to start. Um, what I find with a lot of my clients is they're brilliant people and very creative and they've got pieces of their book swirling around you know there's part of their book is on their hard drive and part of it's in their imagination and part of it's in their brain and part of it's in the higher dimensions of who they are and you know there are pieces of it in their journal and it and right. so how do you take all of those jigsaw puzzle pieces and pull it together into a coherent whole that somebody can actually hold in their hands and read you know it's almost a magical magic brad process <laughs> and so, so I think that I think that was a big part of what what stopped me initially with that first book was just, gosh, this is a big project. I have no idea how to tackle it. And so again, uh, you know, I'm I'm an advocate of uh, like I'm trying to let people know that they should probably be hiring somebody or working with somebody to to get it done. And in that, sometimes these these um, situations, like it's the unknown, like you use you know those combination yeah. locks. It's just three digits. You turn it to the right numbers, it pops open. But if you get a number wrong, one number wrong, it doesn't open. So if you know the combination already, why not, you know, figure that out? You know, you've sort of blazed the trail and gone through all those things. And that can, it can release a lot of that anxiety that a person has, even though, though they, like, you probably have systems and stuff. Okay, this is what you do. Get your journal, get your diary make some notes, pull it all together, go onto Facebook, get all those bad, those old blog posts, pull them together, uh, drop it off to an editor, they'll do it all for you. And then all you have to do is wait, <laughs> almost. <laughs> is that what, it, is that the way it works? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I do have, but I do have processes for this that um, I think the other thing too, to keep in mind is there is a skill set around writing a book, just like there's a skill set totally. around everything every entrepreneur ever does. Like you, you start out, you don't know how to do it. You don't have a system. You don't have a process. You don't have accountability in place. You, you don't know what you're doing. And um, once you've done it once, then you have a skill set. You've started to develop that book writing skill set. And I, and I find that with my clients too, is that, oh, once they get that first book done, now they know what they're doing. And the second book eventually come. It's like second child really, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. you have, you give birth to that first baby and you go, oh, I am never doing this again. That was something else. And then six months later, you start feeling a little mellow and you, you know, you love that little baby and you go, hmm, mm -hmm. I have an idea for another baby or another book. <laughs> and I, I see that in my clients so often because once they've done it once, they know what they're in for. Mm -hmm. And they have a system, more, more of a system in place, certainly than they did for the first time. And so. even just like the formatting, there's certain things that you got to know how to set up the chapters and the margins and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure that the editor probably does a lot of that, but you have to be aware of it when you're putting stuff together. Yeah. And I have, uh, so I work as a book coach and an editor. And so as an editor, I have a checklist for my clients to just before the manuscript even comes in the door so they can get it in in more uh, edit ready shape, um, which costs them less money, really, the more work you can do as the author, before you take it to an editor, the, the less expensive it ends up being for you. So do you, do you have a special niche that you work in, like uh, women's books or Christian books or like magic books, you probably wouldn't be able to be an editor for that, because there's a lot of stuff in a magic book that um, you wouldn't understand, like certain moves and things. Do you have certain niches that you stick with? That uh... Yeah, I'm in the personal development field pretty firmly. People who have a book that is going to make a difference in people's lives is really where I love to play. Um, yeah, I, I'm really a big believer that we can help each other live better lives. And those are the books that I want to help with. What was it Wayne Dyer? I think he said he starts by making the book cover and then he writes the book. Or is it I, do, I hadn't heard that about him. That makes a lot of sense, though. Then he's got the visual that's drawing him forward, yeah. or did have. 
But yeah, there, there's no wrong way to do it too, Brad. There are so many ways to write a book and everybody creates their own process as they're doing it. And as long as they're staying on track and moving forward, that's a good process. And one the structures. That, one of the things that's really fascinating to me about the whole concept of books is there's no shortage of books that are already done. Do we need more books? And they keep on coming in. Look at, look at Amazon, you know, they started as a book distributor kind of person. And you go to the, yeah. you know, the, the secondhand stores and there's books everywhere. It's pretty fascinating how many <sighs> books are out yeah. there and people are ready to make more and you're ready to help them. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's a good question. I mean, do we really need more books? And um, I think you do. Times change and ideas change yeah. and yep. And then you can read old like history books. A lot of my magician friends are really into magic history and they look at old books when they had the leather binding and stuff mm. you find them in the the deep dusty shelves of uh, of london <laughs> they yeah, call them I, books over there they don't call them books they call them books books i love an old bookstore that's one of my favorite ways to spend time is to just it, the smell you know of an old bookstore and the smell of an old book mm -hmm. oh my goodness that's heavenly that's how my wife is she goes and sometimes she purges all of her old books and she actually gets really emotional when she's letting them go and she cries and she can't get out of that place without buying more books after she gets her little <laughs> credits you would like my yes. wife i think <laughs> yeah i think i think we'd have lots to talk about she, she's writing a book right now oh what's and she then, writing a book about well she's a shaman so she writes about dreaming and, oh. and deep spiritual stuff and numerology and Ooh. all sorts of very interesting things <laughs> very cool well she'd like my uh what i keep on my desk now. i have my medicine cards book my spirit spirit animal cards <laughs> oh very i knew there was a connection there <laughs> yeah so we would probably would have a lot to talk about yeah well let's get connected on facebook and i'll make a, a connection with you to her i would love that I very interesting mm -hmm. so is there something else that you can like, like do you have some kind of like thing to offer because usually people don't just want to go okay i'm going to hire her they want to kind of dip their toe in the water and kind of understand how do you work and everything do you have like a little guidebook that you um, offer or something yeah what i i've got a bunch of stuff um i have a free writing course a three module writing course if anybody would be interested just just cool. to Im improve your writing game is all with my experience as a writer i've actually written a book about how to write more powerfully and so Let's this some started how do you how do you get a, access to that um the the uh, url is crossmanscrashcourse.com with oh, no hyphen i can put that in the ccc yep Crossman's, Crossman's. Crash .com. That looks about right. And if anybody's interested in taking a look at that and getting some ideas on how to write a little more powerfully, they're more than welcome. That will opt you into my mailing list, at which point I send out some regular information on writing and writing books and my love of books and book marketing and book publishing and just that whole beautiful, wonderful world of being your your email address to connect with you is crossmancommunications.com. Yep, Susan, Susan at Susan at crossmancommunications.com. And yeah, and if somebody's thinking about writing a book, please get in touch because I would love to see more books out there that make a difference in people's lives. Well, you think about it, how many books are just waiting to be written because of that fear and uh, or the uh, not knowing what how to go about it. And if you can, like mm -hmm. I said, let, let people quantum leap over all that little details. Because even that, that little number, that ISDN or whatever the heck it's called, what is it? ISBN. ISBN. Yeah. I would have to go on to Google and type in how to get an ISBN number. And the problem with the internet is you don't know if you're coming to a real person or that or someone that's just trying to build the mailing list. Yeah. So it's nice to talk with someone like you that has a reputation of knowing what yeah. to do. Thank you. Yeah, Very there's cool. there's a lot to know. And it's it's yeah, it's a bit it's the wild west right now, publishing. It's there's a, so much I going know on with there. all the uh, self publishing things that are going out there and uh, that, that there's you gotta be careful. Like I'm in the event business, I produce trade shows and expos, it's sort of on hold because of the pandemic thing, but mm -hmm. but there's weird stuff that happens on the internet where people are selling my list of attendees. I don't provide that. So there, there's a scammy thing that's going on. So people have to be aware. That's why I like doing video like this, where we yeah. can see who you are 
and we know that you're a real person and not just somebody that's got a great, wonderful opportunity. It's you're human. Yes. <laughs> just about every day of the week, I'm human. <laughs> you do convert, right? Shape -shape. <laughs> that's well, my kids. I don't like to do these too long, keep them condensed so people can All get right. that information. If they want to know more, they can get a hold of you. And sure. uh, maybe down the road, if you've got a new launch or something, or do you ever do retreats or anything like that, or like writers' retreats or anything? Yeah. Well, we're a little bit on hold right now because of the pandemic, but yeah. I do have an event coming up, a three day event in April, and it's an authoring event. It's called Author Kickstart Live. And I don't have a registration link yet for that because we're just a little bit above that. But yeah, I can pass that information on to you at some point, Brad. And if anybody is interested in finding out more about what this wild world of publishing and writing and marketing is about for books, then happy to well, have that's, you. Um, that would be of interest also. I've got a friend in uh, Costa Rica that's got uh, 150 mm -hmm. acres down there and he does like retreats. Um, I think one was a, what, a writer's retreat. We we're gonna do a photography retreat, but he did a mm -hmm. writer's retreat down there and had people- That sounds there. lovely. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to know more. I mean, not right now, but yeah, um, when things start opening up again, yeah. maybe you want to do something down there. He's got all these big giant villas that he mm. that people stay at. And it's, a, it's cool because it takes you out of your element. Yes. You know, you're, you're out of away from concrete and brick and mortar and you're in the jungle and nature. And it's just a yeah. different environment. And it, it brings out different things in that book. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's easier for nature to whisper to you when you are in nature. Sometimes it shouts and you can't hear it. Yes, that sometimes happens too, for sure. <laughs> well, do you have anything else you want to share before we part? And then I'll uh, shut this off. If you want, I, you can stand and chat a little bit. Other than I, that. I think that's it for now. I'm just very appreciative of the chance to be here and hang out with you and, and encourage people to write more books because everybody's perspective is unique. And you know, I think that's something else that keeps people from writing a book is they're worried that well, you know, there's a book about this out there already, but you know what? I think people are tailor-made to write the books that, they're, that they write and totally they're, they've been writing them their whole lives with their life. It's just a question of pulling that information out into three-dimensional reality and it's meant to be. So keep plugging. I don't believe in the competition concept. There's only one individual and there is no competition. There's just you. Okay. So if you've got all this knowledge that you're not getting out, you're basically depriving the rest of the planet you're being, exactly being greedy and stingy yeah let it out stop being so selfish okay susan thank you very much appreciate your right. time if you want to stand we'll chat a little bit other than sure. that, I'll sign this off by the way Sounds if anybody's great. watching this on youtube go ahead and subscribe and click that little bell give it a little thumbs up much appreciated thank you peace thank you brad